all right what's up everybody this is alex from x trades and welcome back to another weekly trade ideas list i hope everybody had a wonderful trading week last week it was an absolutely insane week for american politics for the stock market pretty boring fed day when powell cut by 25 basis points but i feel like the market got so gassed on euphoria after the election that the market just didn't want to move that much anymore during fomc so fomc was actually a little bit more boring which i expected fomc to be more lively and maybe have a bigger impact than the election, but that was not the case at all. So if you tuned into our list and video last week, we did have AMD. We we're looking at calls on that. That actually had a pretty decent week, I would say. It really didn't run as hard as some of the other semis like Nvidia. There's a couple others that did pretty good, but AMD still did pretty good. We were looking at this 141 support, played out perfectly, bounced directly off that actually. So if you bought on Monday, you basically got a $10 move all the way from Monday up into Thursday. And then Friday, just a little bit of a pullback day but overall amd looking pretty good we do have a couple issues that we're running into we do have the 200 ema right here and also the 21 ema kind of meeting at the same spot that could be why we saw short-term resistance for amd we're still holding 150 calls for january so i'm still in that we're up about 10 percent. i think they topped out at about 20 percent, and i was actually already a little bit red so if you waited a little bit and bought on monday instead of my entry which is on friday i believe you're probably up a little bit more and even if you got a shorter expiration date you probably made a little bit more on amd from this little run here got about maybe a five six percent return just on equity here for amd so still looking pretty good but we do have a couple resistance areas in the way like i said you got the dots here 200 ema and also 21 ema also a little trend line here probably needs to get back over that to get inside the gap but amd i'm still holding it's still kind of a lagger i would say you got things hitting all-time highs with AMD kind of a little bit lower than a lot of other semi names. So still lots of potential here. Their earnings wasn't awful, just to meet expectations. And that's why I had that little pullback. We were also looking at Nike here. You can see we were kind of looking at this 76, 74 level, which kind of swept back above. I did mention one risk with this play would be that if Trump got into office, you could have some tariff scares. And we did get that day after. Had a little 3% pullback, still holding up pretty good, I would say. I mean, it's not an awful pullback. And like I said, in the last video and i showed you the nike seasonality is really good for november i would say it was only two red years since 2009 for nike in november maybe this year could be unlucky and you could fall into that low probability period where you fall into the smaller percentile of it not working out but either way nike i would still keep a watch on looking pretty good it's cheaper than a lot of stuff and honestly with the holidays it could still be a good retail play so keep that on watch for nike you probably want to back above 76 74 if and get back above that that level right here that'd be pretty good to kind of start heading back upward and then ko also had a slow start we're looking at calls on ko i was looking at this bigger kind of trend line here i was hoping for a bounce directly off of it we did kind of find some resistance at the 200 EMA. You can see first thing here, Monday and Tuesday, these dots right here, this is the 200 EMA. It was able to reject off of that. And the day after the election night, we did have a little pullback. I feel like a lot of consumer staples and consumer discretionary sectors got smashed and everybody just bought up tech and you know, overvalued stuff. So KO did break that trend and also wasn't able to get back over that 200 EMA. Probably needs to get back over that trend plus the 200 EMA going forward if you want to see upside in this. Right now, I feel like this setup isn't as valid anymore because you broke the trend. You're also under that 6430 right here that we covered. We were hoping for a back test bounce off of that as well. Maybe if you can get back over 6430 and also get back over that trend, you could definitely watch KO again because it's still pretty dipped here. I mean, there's a pretty good dip that could be bought back up with a lot of things running into all time highs it's very hard to find really any setup that's kind of dipped here so ko is still looking pretty good i like nike and also amd as well so i still like all three of these obviously ko needs to get over that 6430 nike needs to get back over that 76 74 i believe and then amd does need to clear those emas so so really only one setup played out last week that'd be amd that was a pretty good play really nice run up the other two just keep on watch obviously every single setup that i put out is not going to play out the first week sometimes it takes a couple weeks we've seen that in the past lots of my setups have taken a couple weeks from the trade ideas list video from any anything you know sometimes it takes time so just keep these on watch don't completely disregard them yet but definitely be careful with ko i would say since it broke under that trend line and then for trades on the x trades app i didn't open anything new except for this little day trade that we did on monday i believe and we made 36 percent on that so we still got the same amd 
150 calls and then also SMCI. I'm still in BA and I'm also still in TLT. And real quick, before we get into seasonality in our setups, we'll go ahead and go over the economic calendar real quick. So Monday, the bond market is closed, but I don't think that's really going to affect equities. You might just see the TLT not move as much, but you'd be surprised on holidays where the bond market is closed. You'll still see TLT and yields do their thing. So, And then on Wednesday, it's going to be the most important day of the week. We do have the CPI. We have the core CPI also CPI year over year. And when it comes to inflation readings, it's always very simple. We want to see inflation ticking lower. We want it closer to the Fed's 2% target. Obviously, the PCE index, which is the Fed's preferred inflation gauge, is at 2.1 right now. So it's actually very close to their target. There is some signs that it has been sticky. Obviously, everybody's still paying insane prices on lots of stuff. I mean, shelter, insurance, gas, maybe it's not as bad, but energy is a pretty volatile sector when it comes to inflation readings. So really, we just want to see, obviously, CPI. CPI below estimates or in line, preferably in line. We want to see it trending lower and really any hint of a soft print would be great. And that means the Fed can keep cutting rates. And then on Thursday, the day after we do have the producer side of inflation, we have the PPI. So definitely pay attention to that. It looks like Chair Jerome Powell is actually speaking at 3 p.m. Not exactly sure what that is, but we can check it out real quick. All right. Thursday, the 14th, we do have speech. Chair Jerome Powell, economic outlook at conversation with Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell, Dallas, Texas. So we'll definitely want to pay attention to that. I don't really think he's going to say anything that new, to be honest, since the FOMC was just last week. And if what he was saying last week was not really moving the market, then maybe this week it's probably not going to really move it that much either. But you never really know. It could slip up. He could say something that maybe they didn't catch in the press conference and it could definitely move the market. But, you know, it just depends. We'll have to see. But definitely pay attention to it at 3 p.m. And then on Friday, we just have retail sales. That's probably the only thing I would pay attention to. So CPI on Wednesday. PPI and Fed Chair Jerome Powell on Thursday, and also retail sales on Friday. All right, and on to seasonality before we go over our weekly setups. We have the 11th to the 15th. We have winning trades at 70% with a summarized profit at 2%. That's for the 10 year data set. You can kind of see there's a little initial dip, then it kind of comes back up. And then if we move this bar all the way to the right to 60 years, you can see we do get 31 years worth of data here from the SPY, which is how long it's been around. Been around for 31 years this little ETF. We have winning trades at 71%, summarized profit at 14%, another high probability period. So last week was extra bullish, as you saw. I think it was the fourth up into right here, just a straight vertical move. And we saw that in the markets. We had winning trades at 90% last week for the 10 year with 74% winning trades for the 31 year. This week, the 10 year, not as high probability. But the 31 year since SPY's inception, we have winning trades at 71%, summarized profit 14%. So still bullish. Don't really see a reason to short the market. These closing months for the year, usually always pretty good. Santa Claus rally, consumer spending picks up, people buy stuff for holidays, and you see that reflect in stock prices. So a little bit hard to short going into the end of the year, really for any year. All right, and on to our setups for this week. I only have two for you. It's very hard to find stuff that's not just breaking out all-time highs or already too expensive for me. I like to find stuff a little bit more discounted. I will trade momentum, but only if it's in the middle of a run and then you have a pretty sizable dip into the moving averages and I'll go along there and then I'll trade it back upward. I don't really chase breakouts like vertical moves like this. It's just not my style. I've been rug pulled a lot when I first started trading doing that. So I started going into more discounted names, trying to find stuff at a discount on red days. So our first setup, we're looking at Gap here. It's an obvious kind of retail holiday play. I'm really interested in any of the retailers going into the end of the year. I think Gap does report earnings here. Gap earnings in 11 days. So just like I always say always be careful with earnings i even gave a warning you know trading earnings with the last earnings setup they were looking at and that was mu mu had a killer quarter and they did pretty good and it should have paid if you you know held on to it or traded calls into it but either way i'm still going to put out the warning with earnings it's a total gamble you could have the best looking setup and still the stock could shit the bed or do the total opposite if it's a bullish pattern it could go bearish if it's a bearish pattern it could go bullish it's all dependent on the financial the financial statements how they did in the quarter but this is pretty straightforward you have a test one a test two small test three rejection i try to break out the first time it's very weak kind of back tested short term bounce back tested again but then came into this lower trend line got test 1 test 2 now holding up the test 3 so we're kind of coiling here. I haven't really seen that big breakout set up from this little wedge or anything. I'm kind of hoping to see a little bit more upside here, kind of head back up towards 25, which is the big kind of 
recent resistance. You're also back above the 200 EMA, which is these dots. You're kind of above the 921 and the 50, which is all of these. And you can kind of see once it gets over all those, you do get a little bit of momentum, even back here when it got back over them right here, a little bit of momentum. And overall, traders like to see stocks over all of their moving averages when they're in a trend. You also have MACD positive to the upside. You can see this little green circle. That means the MACD is positive, likewise negative when it's red. So that's for gap, pretty simple. It's holding up trend. You have a couple back tests. I would really like to see follow through on this breakout. It's looking pretty good. Holidays are coming up. Maybe we'll see shopping pick up and we'll see that reflect throughout the rest of the year. And like I said, earnings in 11 days. So this is a risky play if you hold into earnings. If I'm correct and it does run up into earnings and you get enough, take profit. If you're kind of scared to hold options through earnings, just stick to shares. So be careful and always weigh out the risks with earnings. All right, number two, looking at TLT here, which I've actually had a hard time with TLT because I, I kind of bought it around this area. I think I bought it back around here as well. So I have two strikes open on TLT. I one for a 100 strike. I bought way too early. And then instead of averaging down on that, I think I waited till it got much lower and I added a 95 call instead. So right now I'm in a 95 call and overall it's just been chopping. I mean, going back and forth, bond volatility has actually been higher than stocks. Like bonds have definitely been moving more than equities in terms of daily swings. Some of these moves have just been massive on the bonds, which it's not supposed to be. It's supposed to be a boring asset. Something that moves pretty slow and usually just kind of reacts with, you know, Fed policy or economic data. And even on random days, I mean, this thing is just swinging, you know, down 1.7, up 1%, up 0.5%, down 1.7 again, just over and over. And then you got a down 2.7%, up 1.2, up 1.2 again, recovers the whole gap. So it's just been very crazy in Bondlandia. But overall, you can kind of see a little support trend here. You got test one, a test two, a test three. And then on test four, it's kind of where it really had this little run up going into FOMC. And then day after FOMC on Friday, obviously they liked what he said about rates continuing to gradually come down. I personally feel like they definitely overshot the bonds here and especially on yields. Literally yields have been going higher since the Fed has cut rates, which has been a total opposite move of anything that makes sense. It could either be because of inflation risk. You, see, you have the bond market seeing more inflation risk. When they see more inflation risk, they demand more yield. They could just be dumping bonds and getting into stocks because they see a soft landing. I mean, there's a bunch of things. Could be driving yields higher despite the Fed cutting. But either way, TLT is kind of my favorite play, I would say, right now that's kind of at a discount. I definitely feel like yields have overstayed their welcome and they're probably going to start coming down gradually. Hopefully mortgage rates will too. I really only feel like rates would go higher on the Fed's end if inflation started ticking back up to four or five percent and you have multiple readings over that. Obviously they can't take a rate hike off the table because you always need that ammo if something happens. If inflation does gas back up, you need that ammo. You need to be able to hike rates. With the trend we have, I don't really see that happening at the moment. Maybe Trump tariffs could pose that risk. Maybe government spending could make it worse. You know, you never really know. But right now with the trend we have going, I feel like yields have overshot and I'm hoping for higher bond prices. So really for TLT, we need it to get over 93. You can see over 93, you have a multiple kind of test rejections short term. You got kind of the opening of the gap right here, a rejection right here, short term rejection in this little sequence here, pulled up into it right here, big rejection down. That's where this big gap down candle came from. And now it's starting to drive back up. So we need over that 93. Over that 93, there's a lot of free space back up. You have another gap right here, another gap right here, another gap right here. So there's lots of gaps to the upside. You also have pretty good support right here at 89.82 and another support right here at 91.47. So that 89.82 or just the 90 level is pretty much a direct bounce. So that's for TLT. Pay attention to calls. I'm already in 95 calls. I just wanted to bring it to your attention. It's definitely not at all-time highs. It's a little bit at a discount if you think yields have overshot and you believe the Fed and rates starting to come down gradually over time, this is a pretty good play because eventually they are going to come down and that will drive TLT higher. All right, and on to the indexes. So last week for SPY, we were really focused on 574, 71 and also 565 since we were kind of down here. So we never got to the 565, but we did reclaim over the 574. I did mention if you started getting over 574s, 
or you know 575 whatever start looking for upside that would probably bring you back bullish because you have this little gap here and then the max upside i could see obviously it was probably just all-time high previous all-time high and that's kind of the only thing you can project up to until you see a breakout like this once you get that close over your previous all-time high you can start shooting for the stars start kind of projecting a little bit higher you might have to use fibonacci extensions to get your price targets like started from here went down to here if you got that breakout over 586 like your first price target could be 591 and then you know 597 and just kind of use these extensions as potential price targets since you you got all-time highs you have nothing else to go off you don't have a previous all-time high like this to project to when you're buying a dip down here so that's one way to go about all-time highs if you did new price targets you're not sure where to go where to think of price going those little extensions start at the high go down to the low and then start looking for your 1.272 and your 1.618 200 etc so that's really it i mean it's it's really hard to figure out where this thing is going next i definitely wouldn't short until you at least took out friday's low so if for some reason we started going under friday's low you do have some buy imbalance here that could fill down and at least come back down to 586 if it's not breaking friday's low i really wouldn't short this for right now you are very overextended over the 9 ema the 21 ema i wouldn't want to go long here usually for a 52 week high breakout like this you want to go long on the first bar or go long on the back test and then trade up but now we're three bars deep three sessions up deep after this breakout you got to be a little bit more careful wait for a dip and also wait for 596 to get taken out which is friday's low before trying to go short you'd also need a vic signal which we'll go over later before going short or doing anything like that so a little bit tough to go long here i don't really care for this buy right now for a specific setup but definitely for now just keep that friday low in focus if it flushes that you do have a little bit of downside potential and then you know if you pull into the movie averages you can go long try to shoot back up so you guys know me i add on dips i don't really trade the rips i will trade the rips if there's a back test though so here's an example of a back test you had the previous 586 all-time high you had a gap over it pull into it you go long scalp it right here same thing right here get another back test off 586 again ran the whole day so that's kind of where you want to be adding i don't like trading into the highs i add on the dips but yeah that's really it new 52 week highs you got max d positive i don't really see a reason to short this yet but if you do get under 596 which is friday's low definitely watch for a quick flush on the short term all right and on to qqq which setup was honestly 100 times better we were focused on that 485 which we kind of reacted off of last friday i mentioned you know scalps to the upside looked really good at 585 which we did I showed you that QQQ day trade we did here. This was directly off 585. You can see asset entry was actually at 484.91. So you can see I did follow that level. I just bought directly off the 585 and it worked out very well. So I was really glad that worked out. And even for the swing traders, if you went long off 485, I mean, just an absolute beast move here. Broke out new 52 week highs. We have a new all time high. Finally got over 503.50. So so NASDAQ was definitely a banger last week. It was much better than SPY because we actually had a test of a very big support level. SPY really didn't. I mean, you did have the kind of the 50 EMA that we looked at. I think we looked at the 38 and the 50 last week on SPY. That was a pretty good play. So you could use that as support. But QQQ had the 50 EMA plus that 485 which is right here so this is the 50 ema plus the 485 and that really made it a banger it was kind of hard for me to expect higher prices until qqq got back over into this gap plus over the trend line that we were looking at last week because this trend line break was a risk i just wasn't bearish until we got under 485 which we really didn't maybe dipped under it briefly but no 15 minute close under no one hour close under i think this is where we bought yeah right here on monday and that was a pretty good play so no 15 minute close under 485 no one hour close under 485 and overall it was holding so i wasn't bearish last week and then for this week obviously i really only like a play or a dip buy if it starts coming back into 503 as a back test previous all-time high i like this as a value area buy once it dips it can definitely rip directly off of that on the short term hopefully we can get a dip i basically have the same outlook on this as spy if it's not taken out friday's low which is 512.41 and then for spy it's 596 if it's not taken out friday's low it's probably not going to flush down to be honest but you do have a really big buy imbalance from the elections here. I mean, you got a little mini gap here. You got a big gap here. So 
Maybe we do need a little bit of a dip before ripping again, but market is very euphoric right now. I wouldn't step in front of it unless you have a great signal. And right now, the only signal or only key level you can really use, you know, is kind of the bottoms and the tops of these candles because there's no previous big key levels like we have back here. We had all these kind of key levels and multi tests to go off of like 485. You had a, a price target you could project up to, which is, you know, 52 week high that it already made. Right now, we're in an uncharted territory and we have no key levels nearby. So you kind of have to use Friday's low on SPY and Q -Q -Q. And then you can also use this candle low as well, you know, 508. That probably will have some emphasis if it gets down there. So just make sure you're marking like the kind of the big candles, the highs and the lows. Use those as short term day trade levels because you really have nothing else to go off of at the moment. So either wait for 512 to break for some downside, like a quick flush, or just wait for it to get down to 503s. To kind of buy the dip maybe the moving averages will catch up and you can pull into the 921 and you can buy for that as well but it's still looking pretty good i mean macd is positive new 52 week highs the weekly bar closes are crazy like that's just extra bullish no reason to short and not a great area to go long either sorry i don't have a great setup like last time but that's kind of how these things go you know market We'll have a great setup one week and then next week you kind of have to slow it down a little bit or wait for something better that's kind of where we're at right now on SPY and QQQ. And then for VIX last week, went exactly how I was hoping it would go. We wanted to see a big rejection off the 23s. My max downside target, I think, was like 18. It ended up going much lower than that. I really didn't expect volatility to fall 20% in one day. So 14s was not on my bingo card. 18s maximum was kind of my price target if the 23 rejections played out which it did you can see first thing monday i mean just directly off of that 2308 and i mentioned 2308 has played a role for a long time now the 2308 goes all the way back to over here and it played a role here here and here that 23 will probably play a role in the future as well if it gets back up there we'll keep it there 2112 i think i mentioned last week as well we wanted vix under 2112 to really get to the 18s and you can see that first close on tuesday on under going into the election that really did set us up for a big move down so it went exactly how i was hoping seasonality was bullish last week we had a big 23 rejection level on the VIX, we had SPY still over 565. We had QQQ holding 485. So we had a lot of signals last week that were pretty favorable to go higher, especially the seasonality. And overall, I mean, it went exactly how you want to see it go. This week for VIX, we do have a little bit more of a worry because we're at a previous level. It's reversed pretty aggressively. You have a pretty big pop off VIX back here in August, a very big pop back here in September, another big pop here in September going into October, and we're there now. So every time VIX has gotten to this level the last three months, it has kind of reversed and had a short-term bounce at least. So you want to be a little bit more careful here. If for some reason we do start getting very aggressive off this level and you see a big VIX pop, we do have this huge gap. I mean, obviously VIX doesn't trade, like you can't buy VIX shares, but you know, with this gap, that is a psychological thing. It could fill back up. Who knows? If you didn't know, VIX is traded specifically only for options. Like you can only get VIX options. You can't buy VIX shares. So there's no supply and demand. And that's why some people think it's pointless to chart the VIX. I don't. The reason I don't is because it's obvious. I mean, we've had multiple rejections at 23s, multiple bounces at lower 14s, around 15. And overall, I mean, I've showed you in the past, some of these bigger levels, they always play out. I mean, there's always some type of reaction. And I think that's because there's probably algorithms that are aligned trading this with the SPX. Once VIX gets to a certain level, people might start hedging on SPX puts and that drives it back up. Like when it gets lower, that means SPX puts get pretty cheap, premiums get cheaper, and it makes people more inclined to hedge. And that's why you see the run up. Likewise, when premiums get too expensive, you start seeing VIX sell off at the higher levels. And overall, volatility always comes back down eventually. It always comes back down to the mean. So the VIX will always play its role short term, and it's a very useful tool, and I highly recommend tracking it on the higher time frames because there is some pretty nasty levels. Obviously, every time VIX gets to 23, there's something that happens in the SPX options that leads it to going down. Likewise, to the upside, when VIX gets to a lower level, something happens in the SPX options that drives it up. So that's why you want to pay attention to it. And that's why I do chart the VIX. So yeah, just watch this 1478 to 1446. If we do start getting below that, there's a lot more downside. The VIX can go as low as this 11s. I think it's all-time low. It's probably like in the 8s. 
eights or nines before it starts reversing back up. So there's still a little bit to go here. Obviously, 14 is very low, so the market might move a little bit slow. You'll see ATRs kind of tighten up. You're not going to see big as big of intraday swings unless the VIX kind of gets a little bit more elevated as we have back here. So when it starts getting over like the 18s into the 20s and stuff, you'll definitely see like the intraday swings and day trading gets a little bit better because, you know, you have larger point moves once it starts getting tighter like this it can get a little bit more tough and you kind of just see it melt up and we kind of got a hint of that on friday i mean just kind of like a slow melt up you had qqq very choppy like this is not high volatility conditions at all so kind of got a little hint of what low vix felt like again after having an above 18 to 20 vix for a while maybe we're due for some slow kind of market waiting type moves and that might mean you need to be a little bit more cautious day trading have tighter you know profit targets and stuff like that and don't expect too big of moves in the market when VIX is very low. It's another way to use the VIX. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like I said, just watch this 1478 to 1446. If we start bouncing off this aggressive and you got SPY getting under Friday's low and QQQ getting under Friday's low, we could see a short-term flush. With seasonality still bullish, I'm not expecting too big of a pullback. The only reason why I could see a pullback into this week, like a little small one, is because we've gotten very euphoric and we might need to rebalance back into the moving averages on the short term, like the 9 and the 21 EMAs. Likewise for QQQ, we're kind of a little bit extended over, so maybe just a little brief pullback before going higher. But like I said, you need your VIX signal. You need SPY QQQ under Friday's low in order to do that. So still bullish until the end of the year, pretty much. But, you know, I'm always prepared for some type of little pullback in the market. And I, I welcome them because it gives me a chance to enter. I don't like chasing into the highs. So watch Friday's low, SPY, QQQ. Watch VIX at this big level. Maybe we can get a little dip and we can get, you know, start looking for dip bias again. So hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. I'm going to go ahead and get this chopped up, sent out, all that good stuff. I love you, and I'm out. There's a reason why Xtrades is currently the fastest growing application on the market for sharing financial ideas. With over $2.5 million paid in the last two years to contributors, users are flocking to see what trades the top traders on the leaderboard are sharing in real time. If you're looking to grow your reputation as a trader on the internet or discuss your trading ideas with other reputable investors, click the link below and get connected with the trading mentor today completely free of charge.